Ah, a very, very warm welcome to you both. Uh, I know everyone here is very excited to, to hear what you have to say, the lessons you have to share. Shaquille, Renata and Mike, you're also going to be part of this conversation. Uh, I just I'd like to kick off today by just finding out from each one of you uh, just a short uh, explanation about why you started your business, how long you've been in business, and just the road to where you are today, what you do. Let's introduce yourselves uh, to our delegates today. Uh, Shaquille, let's start with you. You won our National Entrepreneur of the Year Award last year at the South African Small Business Awards. Uh, tell us about your journey. Hi, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much. I'm really excited about this conversation we're going to have today. So, yeah, the journey started 18 years ago, uh, Leanne, and we started with two employees, that's including and my neighbor, who was also my best friend at the time. So we started out this business, a fabric business, and he's gone off, he worked for me for one year, and he's gone off to become an electrical engineer. And I've since employed or have under, within the company 30 staff members. We've grown into two years. We've got an online business. Um, I've also been able to um, shift the way I've worked within the business to working uh, on the business. And that has all part of freedom to start my own coaching practice as well. So I've got all these different things running and so far so good. Thanks to, to Mike's uh, mentorship and this platform has also given me a lot of support through the years and since I've joined, it has accelerated me. And I like what Mike said earlier about you don't need it to be perfect to start. And then in this type of platform, you have everything you need really to launch your startup and to just grow your business oh that's incredible uh, the growth over the years is just wonderful you should be so so proud of everything you've achieved and i know we are all waiting in eager anticipation to see where you grow and what you do next you definitely exhibit the spirit of the entrepreneur uh renata uh, we, we've touched base a few times. Uh, I know you've also been in business for quite a while now. Tell us about your business, Noble Prosperity, how you started and what your journey has looked like. Thanks, Leanne and Mike. Thanks for having me. Uh, first, I want to say, wow, 10 years. That's amazing for, for this platform. Uh, I think I've uh, been part of the NSBC from the early times and I can't actually believe that it's been 10 years and Shaquille uh, congrats on on your award as well so uh, as far as noble prosperity um going just about four years now um but it's one of as Mike said earlier many businesses started in the past and I've learned that one of my superpowers is starting businesses growing businesses and in this business, I prefer to rather educate and help other businesses grow and optimize um, rather than building big operations. Again, in the past, I had bigger operations, many staff. And I just found for me, I enjoy dealing with various business owners rather than just growing my own big business this time. So going out, helping the business owners out there. Yeah, and, and making numbers fun. So for me, that's the, the big thing, uh, coaching, guiding, training, and, and making the numbers tell their story, taking, taking away the fear and anxiety. I think if you, can, if you can simplify things and you can remove the fear, the uncertainty, the anxiety, you, you lay the road open and you make it easier for people to just do business. So yeah, that's my road. I remember uh, my sister watched a, an interview you and I did about a year ago and uh, you used, uh, she, she, she was so stunned because for her, the numbers are terrifying. She hates tax. She hates, I mean, even I get heart palpitations just when I think of doing tax. And uh, she said she's never met anyone in her life that used the words numbers make my heart sing. So, oh. uh, I, <laughs> so I definitely am very grateful. There are people that numbers make your heart sing and uh, yeah, uh, helping others is that that amazing it's amazing that you found that 
that's that's where you want to focus your attention on now uh mike over to you you have been a lifelong entrepreneur tell us a little bit more about your story for those who haven't heard it before cheapest and this is gonna take hours but before i start <laughs> a few minutes before i start i must tell everybody out there uh, a few years ago uh, renata used to do my financials for my trusts and uh, she used to call me in for an annual review financial review she was the only person who's ever made me feel happy talking about financials <laughs> <laughs> so renata you've gone a long way and you're a big one to you and your story is amazing i know you you're unstoppable and you're going to do big things and uh, we're very proud to be associated with both you and renata and all our delegates out there so it's because of people like you we can do what we do so truly, truly appreciate and extremely grateful for, for your involvement. For my side, well, I'm going to keep it very short. I think I became an entrepreneur soon after I was born. Because, you know, my, my dad was an entrepreneur and he was a he was small time entrepreneur, but he was a passionate guy. And he kind of instilled that into me from a very young age. So I knew when I was at school what I wanted to do. I want to become an entrepreneur. I had no idea what I was going to do. But I needed, you know, we had a very a humble family. We, you know, we weren't a wealthy family at all. So after my military service, I needed to make some form of money quite quickly. I didn't go to university because I needed to make money. So I decided to go spend, a few, I became a professional commercial diver up on the West Coast and I dived diamonds for about three years. Uh, sounds fantastic. It's not as glamorous as people think it is. Hard work, adventure. I didn't make the kind of money I thought I would. Uh, but I, I had an amazing time. And then after that, I was in my mid-20s. I went to Cape Town and I kind of started my first uh, uh, business. I made some contacts. And what I found was that uh, there was, you know, the fresh fish industry was untapped. And, uh, and, and so what I did do through contacts, we decided no money, got this together quite quickly. We, uh, I made a contact from a fish supplier in Hart Bay that I would, what I would do is take fish on an aeroplane, deliver it to Johannesburg and distribute to restaurants around the Santon area. Well, a few weeks down the line, we managed to do this. So my first shipment, what we did do, we put a few hundred fish on, on ice in an aeroplane, flew to Johannesburg, uh, a number of the big restaurants, I had a distributor there and uh, distributed this fish to, of course, uh, about 40 restaurants in Santa. Well, the next day, what I realized is, my phone went moggy. I'd poisoned half of Johannesburg. <laughs> because you can't just put fresh fish. The, ch the different changes in temperature, uh, of course, uh, poisoned half of uh, Johannesburg. So I was in the fish business very quickly, and I was out very quickly. So I realized I must start doing what I do best. But I hadn't done much in my life, so I had to start learning. And at that early stage, I realized, it doesn't matter if you fail, as long as you do it and you learn from that failure, so you can use it down the line. So then I, what I did do, I did a few little things here and there. Then I realized the big frenzy in Cape Town at that time was wherever I went, I saw these mobile caravans on the side of the roads, you know, fast food caravans, little kitchens in it and selling hot dogs and gourmet rolls. So I, I decided that let me make some contacts because they, 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 and the ones that I saw they were extremely busy, but there weren't enough of them. So I realized there was a business opportunity here. So in a matter of time, it's another long story, but I'll keep this one short. I got into the caravan, fast food caravan distribution business. So in a few weeks, I had 250 caravans uh, be transported by Transnet from Johannesburg to Cape Town. I wangled a deal, I got it on tick, and of course I got these caravans. About six o'clock the next morning, I get a phone call and uh, I, was on the, I was on the front page of every newspaper in South Africa. The train overturned in the Karoo with 250 caravans. And uh, so imagine, work that out. At that point in, in 1986, uh, oh, I was about 26 then. So w the biggest mistake I'd made, I had no insurance. So of course, I lost a few million bucks, which I had to still pay out. Eventually, it took me a few years, I eventually paid them back and uh, we're still great friends. So, yeah, so I think that time, again, you know, I learned a great deal from that. You know, do the right stuff, do the right thing, make sure you've got your compliances in order, get your insurance <laughs> intact. And then I started in the exhibition business. In 1992, I did the first scuba diving exhibition at the Stanbank Arena. 
and I had no idea how to do an exhibition, but what turned out to be my, one of my first successes. You know, in a three-day event, Scuba 92, we got 75 exhibitors, 8,000 visitors. Wow, that was of October 1992. So I realized, wow, this is an amazing kind of business, but I realized I can't just, just do this once a year. Uh, I need to do something else. I realized I spent three months looking for a business opportunity, and I couldn't find it. I didn't know where to go. So, uh, well, what I did do, I created the first business, Franchise and Business Opportunities Expo, which was hosted in 1993 at the Kalom Exhibition Center in Johannesburg. And uh, I got, uh, I got, Standard Bank was my first sponsor. Uh, they trusted me, they believed in me at that time. And of course, uh, uh, we hosted it then and it was an enormous success. So Biz, 90, uh, Biz 93 went on. And this is where the business show came from in those days. But what happened was, I did. A, I ran a big portfolio. I did some exhibitions overseas. I built up a big company and uh, sold it to an international company. And uh, and uh, after many failures, I arrived at where I wanted to be. But I was still anxious to do a lot more. And I realized that I wanted to spend the rest of my life helping others to do what I should have done before. I'm learning what I, I went through. But also, I wanted to spend the rest of my life helping others. And that's when I launched. Uh, the, uh, the NSPC uh, 14 years ago. And uh, of course, Small Business Friday is 10 years old, but uh, the, the NSPC will be turning 14 shortly. And that was a pure agenda. You know, I didn't start the NSPC with a business plan because I didn't want to. I had no agenda. If I could help one small business in one small way every day, I would be successful. So we never realized at that point, and I knew my, the biggest success would be the people who work within the NSPC, and that's people like Julian and and Tuna and Alicia and Tomei and Marita and, and Taylor, and, and the list goes on. And it's because of people like you who have helped me to do, uh, our team has achieved enormous, and we've helped thousands and thousands of SMEs. To me, that's the biggest reward I've ever had in business. It's not the money, I didn't do this for the money, and uh, it's a non-profit organization. And uh, so it's been an amazing journey. And uh, where to from next, we have absolutely no idea. And I have no agenda of changing what I do. And so I'll spend the rest of my life doing this. Well, thank you for that, Mike. And and yours is just proof of what, what the journey of entrepreneurship looks like. It is a winding road to success. It's not just a steady climb to the top. It kind of does some loops and dips. And I see Renata nodding. And yes, that is the way it goes. And that actually leads me perfectly into the next question. And the topic of today's discussion is unstoppable, looking at the entrepreneurial journey and how it's the winding road to success. Uh, and Shaquille, I'd like to to ask you this question um, because you have been in business for many years you started humble beginnings just you and your neighbor um, you've walked that road what qualities make an entrepreneur unstoppable what have you found over the years like Mike said failure he's come back from failure so many times what have you observed in this yeah. time in business yeah so first I want to I want to just let's define this word which uh, when I when I looked in the dictionary, it means being invincible. It means uh, preventing yourself from from stopping, and really, it doesn't do justice. Being unstoppable, if you take the literal meaning, it doesn't do justice to what it means to be an unstoppable entrepreneur. And then to add onto this term unstoppable you see these people flying in first class and driving these amazing cars and you get um sidetracked or drawn into this hype of i want to be this unstoppable entrepreneur and realistically how many times haven't we got with a plan for the day and then the day the day ran away with us the day owned us and we didn't own the day so yeah. i think it's very really important to just um, be clear on what this, what it means to be an unstoppable entrepreneur, uh, Leanne. And then Mike gave this beautiful uh, synopsis of his background. Um, and Renata also explained how she's done numerous uh, businesses and she, yet she's still sitting here on this panel as an entrepreneur. So we can see one of the qualities are oh, that we have to be um, we have to be fearless or we, sorry we have to be um 
what is the word I'm looking for now? Consistent. Mm -hmm. We have to pitch up every day. So mm -hmm. whether it's a bad day or a good day, we still have to pitch up. So entrepreneurship is a, is a long game, as you explained. And one of the things that qualities that has really helped me, and that is to be a missionary for my business. And we know being a missionary, missionaries, they have a, a great life purpose and they have a vision. So imagine if you are a missionary for your business, hence the shirt here with the logo, um, what can you achieve for your business? And then also qualities like being a student, being a lifelong student. So I started out with two employees, but we've grown. And how was I, how was I able to manage this type of through the years? And I could only manage it properly by sitting in a mentorship class with Renata and her teaching me about financials was sitting with Mike in his class. And when he has one of the executives from APSA or any other sponsors, and they're talking about organizational structure, these gems that I've taken along the way and classes and courses that I've done has helped me to manage this growth and to then put systems in place to help me reach those levels. Um, being super focused, you know, and a lot of people today, we are, okay, today we live in a world of distraction, but we also find ourselves being multi-passionate, like I love surfing, I love running, but when you do something, when you do one of your tasks, then go all in and be focused on one task. Don't multitask, don't sit in a panel and then be, you're reading something and you're doing something else, you're kind of watered, watering down the effect that you could have had if you were just super focused. So being focused is, is something to do, uh, to have. Another quality is endurance. You know, when we running as a sport or play any sport, if you want to play, if you want to run a marathon, you have to build up your endurance. And something um, about business is that you're not going to build your best version of a business tomorrow. It's a, it takes a daily practice. So building that endurance is showing up every day, um, being lenient on yourself if you don't finish all those tasks, you know, a step back, resting a bit, allowing the day to get the better of you sometimes, but also understanding that if you started at where seven of your days was a bad day, then next week you're going to have six days that's a bad day. And then the following week you're going to have five days until you have three bad days for every week and that becomes a norm. And so you can, you can grow from there and build. Um, another one is learning to lead. And I think Mike and any entrepreneur can that if you if you lead properly or your leadership qualities affect the rise and the fall of your business. So depending on how you lead as well, that also will affect the long game of your business and the growth. And leadership we know is not it's not a title. It's really an act of service. It's about the impact. Um, it's about playing each team member in their best position, uh, working towards strength. So, and, and I promise you, these are not things that I knew when I started out my business. Completely, completely dumb to these ideas and these concepts, but I learned it on the way. So, being that lifelong the one, um, quality that you need. And then and a final one before I that is to to be badass. And that doesn't mean wearing a little it's kind of it, um you don't want to show up sitting so and then to be assertive. 
one of at my he was I was very much a people pleaser and in the past and I was wanting to get every job I was wanting to please every client and that actually hurt the business more because I committed myself to to a job and then it was it went over budget or the client said you said you were gonna do that but I didn't cost for it so you have to do these things and I wasn't aware and I didn't have the boundaries to really present my quotes properly and so you can um, that being assertive and having healthy boundaries will really help you to accelerate your business and these people that are badass when you look at these entrepreneurs or go-getters they they are not respected for who they are or where they come from they respected for what they've achieved and what they've done so these are the qualities that I've that has really helped me and I was like in this week I was writing down things that has helped me and what I've mentioned today has really helped me and yeah I hope that will help other entrepreneurs also to become unstoppable and to push through all the challenges that you're going to face Thank you, Shaquille. I know there's uh, so many of those points resonated with me. I can just imagine um, from everyone listening today, incredible insults, uh, insults, insights. <laughs> and uh, we, we thank you for that. I mean, these are the things you've learned along the way. You know, you've taken the hard knocks yeah, and you've picked really. yourself up and you've learned from them. And uh, one of the points actually leads in perfectly to what I want to speak to Renata about. You mentioned how you surrounded yourself with experts and specialists and, and you you could you made yourself a, a student um, in business and in life. Uh, so Renata, would you tell us what is the value of surrounding yourself with specialists, you know, people from with different talents from different industries in different businesses? Thanks, Leanne. Yeah, so I truly believe that we all have our own superpower. And entrepreneurs often are people that will start a business because of their unique superpower. So when you do have that and you've figured out what your superpower is, it does not mean that you are supposed to be the hero in every component in your business. And I've seen when I get involved with business owners um, going in to see how are we going to optimize the businesses. They are trying to be the best in every single aspect in the business. And that will, again, as Shaquille said, it dilutes. It dilutes your efforts. It dilutes your energy. So I truly really believe in sticking to your superpower and then putting in the resources from people that shine where they are. So where my superpower is numbers and picking up patterns and picking up where things aren't fitting in the whole way it should. I'm certainly not a marketer. And that is where I would then pull in the superpowers of the marketers or um, the NSBC teams, the people that can put me on the platform and make me shine where I need to shine. So it's, again, that you, you need to understand so much of your business pivots on your superpower. And then to surround yourself with the teams and inside your business, as Mike was saying, the, the success of the NSBC is underpinned by every single team member, understanding their role, understanding their strengths, and how it all fits together as this puzzle. And as Shaquille was saying, when you are a leader, your responsibility is really at the end of the day to understand how will you bring out all these strengths of your people. And when people have what sometimes it's termed a weakness i truly just believe that it's if it's not your strong suit don't throw energy at it there's other people that will specialize in that field not everyone loves numbers so don't give them the number tasks let them work where they are good because they will bring the passion they will bring the energy they will come with something that is aligned with their value and when you can operate in your values you come and you want to be part of the team and you want to deliver. And by bringing in, whether it is employing, whether it is joint ventures, whether it is partnerships, whether it is outsource agreements, whatever that looks like for the business owner, 
by understanding where you can go to find these people with their own unique skills, you just add more to your business. So that for me is, is always when I go into business, I always measure where do we find those unique powers and where are we lacking the, the individual needs in that business so that we can rather tap in there and put money into those areas. But I do think that it, it really is at the end of the day so necessary that we understand our own unique contribution. Um, because also, you know, one thing I pick up often as business owners, what will happen is we understand ourselves and our language and our needs. So what do we employ? More mini-me's. And by employing more mini-me's, we're not actually getting the full scope of the people we need. A another mini-me wouldn't be able to maybe go out and market my business, would not be interested in doing the admin required, would not maybe be the person to deal with my clientele. So to keep employing more of the same is also often harming the business more than doing any good. So that's also where the unique contributions come in. I see, Shaquille, you are smiling with that one. Have you found that personally? Yes. Yes, I have found it personally. And um, because you're, you're so comfortable, you just want to do what's comfortable and you connect with somebody that's similar to you. And it can be detrimental because that person might be so similar that they are also strong in what you are strong in. And so you have this expectation that I employed you to do marketing, but this person is also maybe a visionary, so they're not, and then you start clashing so I've, I've really moved away from when I do onboard team members, really looking at people that is so vastly different from me in background, in the race, in, in all spheres, just so that I can get a completely different perspective. And that helps. Once you have a broader picture, you can make a better decision. So yes, I definitely agree with that, totally. And I found also in your team, so... You also need to understand that people with different values or different, as I call them, superpowers, would maybe speak a different language to you. So if you are the ideas guy, you would be running with 100 new ideas all the time, where the person has to come behind you sweeping up and having to implement these ideas. They may speak a different language. They want to know the how, the when, the what needs to be implemented where you may not really be interested in this. All you want to do is get that idea out there. So sometimes you almost need like a mediating role where you say, hold on, okay, I hear what you've said, but now the implementer needs to hear the following language in order for them to be comfortable to make this whole the idea whole, to take this to market, to make it run, because otherwise you have all these ideas falling flat. So that person that wants their cup and their own space and their own desk and they don't want you messing with their pens and don't move their paper, those are the people that's going to make this stuff happen behind the scenes. Leave them. They, they're good at what they do. Um, you got the ideas, leave them, give them this stuff that they want to get the work done. So it's understanding the different needs, the different, because that person's superpower is getting the stuff done. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So you know, I think that is once we as entrepreneurs can understand that we cannot fill our bucket with more of the same and we need to have a diverse group of people to add value and get the message out there. That really for me has shown um, great impact in businesses. Wow, that made a lot of sense. Um, Renata, I know that there's a lot of um, business owners out there that are, you know, one man show uh, how, and they don't have a team. So I know many st struggle mm. with burnouts, many, many really have the weight of the world on their shoulders because they're trying to do everything themselves. They're trying to do their admin, they're trying to do their marketing, they're, they're working on the product development. Um, how would your advice appear, uh, like how would you, what would you advise them to do in this yeah, sense if they don't have sense. employees or team members? Okay, so what's important there is this is where I also want people to know that team doesn't mean on my payroll. I, I always push this idea that 
Team means anyone I partner with. Team would, would mean teaming up with the NSBC, teaming up with my IT guy on the back end to make sure that my IT systems are working, teaming up with an outsourced person that helps me with my marketing. Um, it's, it's a matter, again, of finding someone that buys into your vision, that buys into your passion, that speaks your language, that can help you. And I understand that often money may be the issue that's holding us back to also not be able to start these uh, partnership agreements. Then it's a matter of educating. Um, also, as Shaquille was saying, it's really focusing specifically on tasks at a time. So, for instance, if you know that you are the one man band and that you don't really have the resources at this stage to bring in other partners, and I'm not talking in your business as real partners, I'm talking outsource partners, and you've got limited resources to do that, maybe to then set out a day to say, okay, let's say uh, every second Friday of the month is marketing idea day. What is it that I'm going to do? Whether it is uh, watching um, educational material, whether it is attending the NSBC events, whether it is reaching out to mentors, whether it is joining master classes, whatever it is you need to do to educate yourself, maybe having a support structure, having someone that is your soundboard. It doesn't always have to be paid. You could have barter agreements with people where what your superpower is is what they need and what they what what they do is what you need and you can also swap for that um i hope that that answers a bit yeah it definitely does and it makes sense that if if you are in need of of you know these superpowers that you may not have today's platform is absolutely perfect for connecting with people that can assist you where you need that so after this panel discussion don't leave take advantage make it make it find new suppliers find new connections friday you know you are you are really investing in your business by hanging around and meeting other business professionals out there that can actually help you as renata has said so mike i'm jumping back to you um you know i know you would agree with everything that shaquille and renata has actually said uh you know uh what other advice would you give small business owners and entrepreneurs how else can they take their businesses to a new level you know again after um Shaquille and Renato, they've taken all my words. <laughs> you guys, you know, it is like that. You know, uh, do what you do best, outsource the rest to someone who can do it to full potential. You know, and I think that's a big learning. Thank you for that. A big learning for uh, business owners and entrepreneurs. But let's talk around the issue of time. You know, focus only on what's important, not urgent. And also learn to say almost learn to say no to almost everything and everyone focus only around the people who are positive like-minded people and i think these are the kind of elements you know coupled with let's take action and do it don't wait conditions to be perfect because they never will be perfect and also what you do you know the road of entrepreneurship and we've all demonstrated that is hard you know make sure that you love what you do and you're passionate about what you do if you're in a business right now and you really hate what you're doing, change direction because you will always and only be mediocre. But what we also have to remember is none of, there's two roads, as we said earlier, there's two roads, the entrepreneurial road or the climbing the corporate ladder. One's not better than the other, it's two different career paths. But if yours is, your passion is to become an entrepreneur, what you really don't want, the biggest mistake or the biggest regret you will have possibly will be one day when you're sitting on your deck chair in your twilight years, you look back and say, if only I did this and if only I did that. So, and, and, and of course, taking risks is imperative, but let's be careful about taking risks. Embrace failure because failure is the route to success. You know, if you start failing, it's meaning that you're starting to become successful. So the word failure is a word that has been used poorly over years. It's not really... Uh, failure is not failure, it's just an obstacle on route to success. And, and, and importantly, and I know we all know many have struggled and have gone down, uh, but that resilience is imperative. You know, we've got to stand up because if we stand up and we keep moving, you know, I always say in my book, you know, if we stand up and we keep moving, we can always arrive at where we want to be. It's just a matter of time. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a uh, intellect, I'm not a smart guy. Uh, I'm just passionately determined that I'm going to achieve my dream. And I, you know, I said yesterday, well, how do I define success? 
uh, my success to me is I can do anything that I want whenever I want. And to be able to achieve that, all these other things are important. To live a healthy life, uh, to be grateful, to be forgiving, uh, to take responsibility for everything thrown at me, uh, you know, and to be different. Like this, the, the great late Steve Jobs, I'd rather be a pirate than join the Navy, you know, and, and, and challenge the status quo all the time. Don't follow the sheep. Don't become part of the 96% of the global population who lives a mediocre life. Be that 1% who's exceptional or that 4% who's doing well out there. So, and you know, all these things, uh, Leanne, all these things, you, you know, it's like happiness. Happiness is a choice. Success is a choice. You know, what, what is the biggest springboard to, to happiness? It's gratitude. And the biggest springboard to success is happiness. And all these little things we can change and we can make happen from today. And yes, become a nice guy. And I'm surrounded by nice people. You know, people say, well, that's easy for you to say, how do I become, I'm not, I know I'm not a nice person, but become a nice guy. Learn to become a nice person because that's why people will do business with you. Wow, Mike, luckily everyone, there will be a replay of this panel discussion because there are so many gems being fired at you right now. I think you can take one a day for the rest of the year and sit and really absorb it and think it. Um, Mike, you mentioned resilience and I know that all three of you business owners, entrepreneurs on the panel today um, know what it means to have to be resilient. Shaquille, let's talk with you a little bit here. We, we've spoken about the winding road. Mike says it's not failures, it's just obstacles on route which is why it is a winding road uh, what advice would you give to entrepreneurs just to help them on the entrepreneurial journey yeah sure thank you for that well i'm i'm sitting here and i'm taking in and i'm learning and i'm being refreshed by all of this insight that's happening so i'm so feeling super blessed this panel Leanne, I just want to come back to what Renata, Renata said earlier about and the question that you had about being this one man show. And you know, in the beginning of my journey, I was, I really thought I needed to be this lone wolf guy <laughs> having to do this whole thing, entrepreneurial thing on my own. And I had this a vision and fantasy in my mind that I'm going to achieve this, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to meet this milestones and it's going to be all on me. That broke me within the first five years of my business. <laughs> and I can tell you, it's going to break everybody. So you, yeah. you don't, you don't have to be this lone wolf um, on your journey. Yes, you have to at times be alone on your journey, but like um, Renata said that you have associations and if you are finding yourself alone and you you find yourself a one-man show something that you can really harness on and work on is the power of leverage and the relationship building so you can you can there's lots of things that you can you can leverage uh, for marketing purposes for organizational purposes for finance you have all these online platforms really that's giving away things for free and you can leverage that to learn from those the one renata might have a free masterclass in one thing i will have a masterclass in some I have a masterclass in the positivity aligned with entrepreneurship and um we can all learn from that and the thing is it's all free it's not something you have to pay for. So um, the excuse of that I have to do it alone or it's going to cost me, it's really after 20 years and I'm in, I was to tell my, 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 my 25 year old self, um, Shaquille, was it because you didn't have money or was it because you were alone that you, that you failed on this, um, I would give myself a different answer. Um, I might have said that time, yes, it is because I don't have any of the resources, or yes, it is because I don't have, um, I'm alone. But now realizing all the opportunities and all the free freebies and the support programs out there, um, it's a whole different story. And um, so coming back to this winding roads, of ups and downs on entrepreneurship so guys what i want to say about that is you are going to fail 
you are definitely going to fail. And the most important thing is, is to embrace that failure and to look at the failure as an opportunity for growth. Mike has alluded to it earlier. And when I, when I have failed at something, I just ask myself one question and this takes me out of victim mode. Uh, why are some people successful when others are not? And so it's the successful person that has learned from his failure. Whereas the other person, they looked at the failure and they defined themselves by that failure. And then they go down a negative spiral. Whereas the one that is successful, he, he or she has taken that failure, looked at, dissected it, pulled it, and, and learn from this and then implement on that and so you don't have to make that same mistake in future and that is how you're going to grow on this on this path and then you're going to find that the economy has a cycle so it does come with dips and it does come with peaks and your business is going to make money one month and the next month you're not going to make money so start an emergency fund from the world whether it's 50 rand or 100 and whatever you can afford in your budget, just make an emergency fund a mandatory part of your, your business. I can't tell you how many times I went into my emergency fund over this eight years and how that has helped me just to boost uh, the business when I didn't have money to buy um, a parcel or uh, a job lot of goods for super cheap or I didn't have money for salaries um then you have that emergency fund to fall back on so understand that this this path is gonna be full of up and downs and having that cushion is very important you're gonna have a hundred no's and one yes so the question is what are you gonna do with that one yes yeah. right Renata? and um so I, I, I like to tell people, um, especially I've started mentoring just to help as my way of giving back, right? And one thing that I encourage them is to be prepared. Be prepared for that one yes. Don't sit and wait at home and watch Netflix or scroll on Facebook looking for the bottom of the feed. Um, you know, do something productive that's going to help you when that opportunity does come. Then you're fully prepared for that opportunity. You can take it with two hands and you can run with it. And um, one thing that will also on this journey for success on this winding road is a lot of people are looking for investment. I found that a lot that people's looking for where can they find money, where can they get capital from. And before you can do that, it's first invest in yourself. Become investable. Like Mike pointed out, Standard Bank was his first corporate sponsor and he mentioned the word they trusted him. And the question I would like Mike to answer is why did they trust him? And that might give us also insight as to how you can become, how you can invest in yourself so that people can then trust you, you can build easier relationships and they'll give you money to further your cause. And I hope that answers the question. Thank you for that. You know, I asked that question uh, after some, some years later and uh, they said, Mark, it was your immense passion in your cause. That was it. Absolutely. And, and, and the thing is, taking from what you said there, Shaquille, as well, you know, the global learnings coming out of the SME sector, what SMEs are going to do more than ever before, three things. They're going to get rid of non-essential spending, they're going to get rid of debt, and they're going to stockpile cash for the next emergency. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that actually leads me on to Renata perfectly, guys. Um, Renata, you the numbers lady here. Uh, uh, you know, what, 
what you, you always speak about the story of numbers. What 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 is that story of numbers in your business? And and maybe start with what Shaquille mentioned with that emergency fund, and then move mm -hmm. into then what what the rest of the numbers can actually highlight and and show you about your business. Sure, sure. Thanks. Yeah, Shaquille, I, I love that you mentioned that because that's also generally the first thing that I go for when I start looking at the numbers in businesses is I want to see the um, emergency fund. Um, and for me, it is also, that's where we would start either saving up for specific things or to just have that emergency fund to carry us through. I also always recommend even for your taxes, because I've so often seen where our small business guys are caught with the taxes and the VAT. Because what happens on a monthly basis, we're so busy trying to get through the month that when we get to the month end, we don't take that money aside and go park it somewhere, knowing it's not our money, it has to go to SARS. Because yes, we'll get there, we will sort it, we will make it on the next deal. The problem is, then something happens and we don't have that money and it doesn't come back. So the first thing I always do is I create what's called provision accounts. I make these little pockets and the one is definitely the SARS pocket. And you can borrow money from many, but don't try SARS. It's very expensive. It's not where we go to play with money. So if you are VAT registered, you want to immediately hold back the money for when you need to pay that money over. If you know that you are in a taxable position, at month end, make sure or on certain deals, as the deals come in when you're talking the bigger deals, take a portion of that money, put it into the money market account or your provision account until such time that you've done your, your um, month end figures and you know what money is available to play with. So the provision account for me is definitely the start. Then the story of the numbers really for me is, it's not just the, the debits and credits. It's not just the money in, money out. It is about what, what is my money doing for me, my cost to benefit exercise. When we look at, for instance, if I've got a warehouse and I've got two different products and I have to store both there and I go and measure the, how well the one is selling versus the other and how much storage space one is taking versus the other. So we start looking at ratios. Sometimes people will just allocate a space. But if you look at it and you go, but hold on, the one is costing me 60% more to house and it's because of either the size or the turnaround on that particular product or I may have old stock. So, you know, we get very attached to what we paid for something. And, and maybe, Shaquille, you would have experienced this in the past. You may have bought some stock at a certain price, and now you're stuck with it. And in your mind, you spend a certain amount on that stock. And rather than letting it go below cost so that you can free up cash so that you can spend it somewhere else and turn that money and making money babies, we hold on to this idea that it costs us a certain amount. I'm certainly not saying sell everything below cost. I'm saying sometimes we need to assess the situation. So we need to understand that uh, my passion is just money is not your, uh, or, or figures is not your enemy. It is really telling us a story. The numbers tell us a story. If you understand what it tells us, it's not good or bad. It is where are we going? Are we on track? Um, are we overspending? Are we spending too little on what matters? You know, often in times when money is not coming in, we want to start cutting. And then we go and cut in the wrong places. We want to let go of the wrong staff. Or we just let go of staff when we shouldn't be letting go of the staff necessarily, but maybe cutting expenses elsewhere. And especially during this COVID time, many people would have needed to cut expenses. But you have to be very mindful how you cut the expenses and what that looks like. So for me, the whole story about numbers is not, numbers are not isolated. It is not the physical black and white number. It is, and what? So what? What is it telling me? And what is the ratio? What is it going to lead into? Where does the story lead at the end of the day? So, um, as Shik yes, you've got a question. 
<laughs> yeah. Now I just want to come in there with an entrepreneurial perspective on this numbers and how people in was so afraid of of numbers. Yes. You know, you, you some you're so afraid. Sometimes you don't even want to look at your financials because you don't want to know what's what's the bottom line looking like because it means you're going to have to make drastic changes. Um, and but then familiarizing yourself you don't have to become an entrepreneur doesn't have to be a accountant or a bookkeeper but just to have that knowledge that overriding knowledge of what the numbers is telling you because like you're saying it tells a story but us as entrepreneurs we don't realize that what the story it, it is telling us so it might tell you that you you're over indebted or it might tell you that um your cash is st stuck in your stock but only when you become comfortable with the numbers and you can read your, your balance sheet and your income statement with your help, of course, um, then you. you're welcome. Then it makes sense and you can move forward better. So definitely that will help your success. I just want yes. to do it. Sorry, Leanne, and that's where I'm going with this because if you can remove this fear and this uncertainty, the numbers actually give you the data. It says to you, look, whether it's good or bad, this is where we're at, but now we're armed. Now we have the information to make decisions. We're not making decisions with our backs against the wall and blind. We actually have the right information to, to turn and to make decisions informed decisions and I think that's why I'm so passionate about it because people are they're scared of numbers and if we can just take away that fear that anxiety and make numbers fun because oh, numbers are fun let's face it I love it <laughs> um, I know Mike Mike often advises and I've heard him say it many times as an entrepreneur you need to every day know what your numbers are hey Mike that is correct you know, I think Absolutely. It's, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's pretty much almost at the top of the pile. You know, we do it every morning. I mean, you know your numbers. How much is in the bank? How much do you owe? Who owes you what? And, you know, I, I personally do that from a business perspective and from a personal perspective. You know, and every single day I, 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 I update that. And it keeps that, like Renata says, it's not a negative thing. It just keeps you know where you're going. And, and you know, if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to get there? So, so, exactly. so and numbers is not the only thing. It's... A, a big part of uh, yes. the part. So, 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 well done. That was a good foresight there, Renata and, and Shaquille. To you. Yes, absolutely. And I know uh, our panelists and I know our delegates out there, we can talk and talk and talk. There is so much gold, and I say gold, uh, it, within each of you. Um, but unfortunately, we have run out of time. So uh, I just want to thank you, Renat. I want to thank you, Shaquille. Um, I know if you, want to, if you want to pop any of your details into the chat, if you would like any of the delegates to, to you know, Renata spoke of webinars that she hosts, Shaquille, I know you have a very active social media presence with aspiring startups. Um, post your details in the chat. Let our delegates then follow you. Let them find you. Um, Mike, do you have any closing remarks for this panel discussion, Small Business Friday, before I chime in and remind people what to do on Small Business Friday? Quick closing marks. Remember the three Ps. Keep that passion, persistence, and perseverance intact. And if you hit the wall, stand up. The only way you can stand up if you're really passionate about what you're doing and keep going. And I always say, you know, if you keep moving, you never give up. Uh, you will get to where you want to be. And thank you very much. Very grateful for this opportunity and, uh, and to all the delegates and to you, Renata, Shaquille and Leanne. It's been awesome. Thank you. It has been. All right. So the last thing I have to say, and we'll let you go back to the floor and make those connections. Remember, it is Small Business Friday today. Everyone here, we need you to go on social media and fly the flag for small business. We'll post a link now in the chat for that graphic. You can download the graphic. Um, use the hashtag Small Biz Friday. And then after this event, go out and support your local small businesses. It is fun. It's a really great thing to do on a Friday afternoon. Who knows who you might meet? Um, who knows what might happen? And let's inspire the nation to go out and support the small businesses out there. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. And uh, back to the floor. Let's get that networking going. Thank you, everyone.